Okay, look, instead of me giving you a list of camera settings and telling you that those settings will make your videos look beautiful, amazing and cinematic, which let's be honest, wouldn't make a lot of sense anyway, because it just doesn't work like that. So instead, I'm gonna show you some clips of videos that I shot with my Sony a7S III and I'll go over some of the settings that I used and more importantly also why I use those settings. And I hope that'll make it easier for you to understand how much and in what way camera settings affect the look of your image because most of the time it's not just the camera settings. <laughs> Now, some of the settings that I use are just personal preference, you know, like pineapple on pizza. What works for me might not work for you. So I'd say just give these settings a try on your Sony a7 IV, a7 III, Sony FX3 and see if you like the result. I'm not saying that the only way to get good results is by using these camera settings, not at all. Uh, okay, maybe let's start with the camera settings that stay the same for all my videos or let's say 90% of my videos. First of all, my camera is always in manual mode. I want control over everything. ISO, aperture, shutter speed, so no auto mode. And then I also usually shoot in S-Log3, that's the gamma setting, and S-Gamma3.Cine, that's the color space that I use. And of course, 10-bit color for serious projects. But sometimes I do drop it down to 8-bit for these talking head videos, for example. But the thing is, S-Log3 is not always the best choice and I'll explain in a bit. I love S-Log3 but sometimes it's better to go for S-Log2 or maybe even a Cinetone. Then I also always use the 180 degree shutter rule. So whenever I shoot in 24 or 25 frames per second, the shutter speed is 1 50th. When I shoot in 50 frames per second, the shutter is 1 100th and so on. And I also shoot all my videos in 4K. Most cameras these days can shoot in 4K. Does that mean that shooting in 1080 is bad? No, of course not. I would say if your computer can handle 4K and you have enough storage space for all those huge files. Whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to spit at you, to you, at you, spit at you, to you. It doesn't matter. Damn, way too much coffee today, man. Um, where was I? Damn it. Oh yeah, so there's nothing wrong with shooting in 1080, even though shooting in 4K has a few advantages. But if your computer can't handle 4K, just shoot in 1080, no problem. Okay, now it's time to show you some clips. The first clip is from a video that I shot at a local fair here, at night. And that's important, it was at night. Of course, there are a lot of lights everywhere because it's a fair, but this is still considered low light. And like I said, some settings stay the same for almost all my videos, no different here. Camera set to manual, 4K, S-Log3, but in this case, S-Log3 is tricky because it's low light. S-Log3 is already tricky when the lighting conditions are normal because you have to overexpose S-Log3, but in low light, it's even more difficult. Everything has to be spot on. A lot of these shots are actually slightly underexposed for S-Log3, which results in, yeah, a more noisy image. But even the correctly exposed shots also are a bit more noisy because it's S-Log3 in a low light situation and it doesn't go very well together. Like I said, everything has to be spot on. So even though I think it's possible to use S-Log3 in a low light situation, using S-Log2 might be a better idea because, yeah, I don't know, it's easier to expose in low light and I think it also performs a little bit better in low light. I'm not sure about this, ask Gerald Dundun, he'll probably know. This is just my personal experience, you know? Or maybe there is another profile that performs really well in low light. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. The ISO here was set at 12,800 by the way, because when shooting in S-Log3, the Sony a7S3 has dual native ISO. I think that's what they call it. And in short, what that means is, at the low end, your base ISO when shooting in S-Log3 is 640, and at the high end, so in low light, it's 12,800. But it depends on the camera. If you have a Sony a7 IV, for example, I think the values for S-Log3 are ISO 800 and 3200. But I could be wrong here, so if you have an a7 IV, let me know in the comments. 
I think it's 803,200. <sighs> I'm still talking way too fast, I feel. But okay. Bottom line is, know your camera. And then what a lot of people also asked me is how did you make the lights look so beautifully, colorfully, cinematically dreamy? Well, that has very little to do with the camera settings actually. Maybe the aperture has something to do with it. I usually set the aperture somewhere in the 2.8 to 3.5 range. But what really makes the lights look so beautiful is well, first of all, the lights themselves, because they were very colorful, but also the color grade and the mist filter. I used a mist filter and in my opinion, it works really well here because it gives the lights that nice soft glow. And I guess that's it for this clip. I don't know, if you have specific questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. But I think that's all I wanted to say about this clip. I've already said too much about this clip. <laughs> okay, on to the next clip. Oh no, the lens, by the way, was the 35mm f1.8, the Sony 35mm f1.8. Okay, on to the next clip. It's a slow motion clip, and it's a clip from a vlog that I shot in the Dominican Republic. 4K, S-Log3, all manual. Also manual focus this time, because, you know, you don't want the focusing system to go crazy once the water starts splashing up, and then it doesn't know where to focus. So manual focus. And this clip was shot in 60 frames per second. Whenever I want slow motion, I go for 60 frames per second, most of the time. And the shutter speed, of course, 1 125th. Now, why didn't I use 120 frames per second or even 240 frames per second? Well, it's just too much for most videos. I only use 120 or 240 when there's super fast movement in the shot, you know, sports, things like that, fast cars, I don't know. Or when I really want super slow-mo and make it look really weird. But other than that, 60 frames per second is perfect for most slow motion. So don't worry if your camera doesn't do 120 or 240. 60 is fine. Or 50, of course. 50 frames per second also looks great. And as you saw, that clip was shot at noon in the bright sun, so I had to use an ND filter. An ND filter is a must-have, also because I want to keep my aperture in the 2.8, 3.5 range, and I don't want to increase my shutter speed, so that's why I have to use an ND filter. Okay, am I still talking way too fast and way too loud and way too... I don't know. I try to, I try to keep it down once I start a new clip. I don't think it's working. But anyway, let's just try to finish this video and then I'll go lie on the couch. <sighs> okay. Next clip is from a short film that I shot for my channel. So just a personal little project. And you know, I'll link it in the description in case you wanna see it. There's also a behind the scenes and everything. So go check it out. But again, a lot of the settings are settings that I always use. So 4K, S-Log3, 24 FPS, shutter 1 50th, aperture in the 2.8 to 3.5 range. And this was also shot with a 35 millimeter prime. Some shots were in low light, so ISO 12800, and some shots were in not so low light, so ISO 640. But you have to find out what your camera can handle, you know? My camera, the Sony a7S III, can handle 12800, the FX3 also can handle that, but the a7 IV, I don't know, maybe 12800 looks way too noisy, so... I mean, let me know in the comments, I don't know. And then I also used a mix of autofocus and manual focus. Whenever there is a face in the frame, the autofocus of the Sony a7S III, it's, it's great. It locks onto the eye and it stays there. But for other shots, you know, I also use manual focus. It just depends. Now, some of you have asked me how I got the look for this short film. So why it looks like that. And again, it has very little to do with the camera settings. I mean, the camera settings are a small part of it, but it's also, first of all, the time of the day, the light. I shot everything at blue hour, which is one of the best times of the day to shoot cinematic video. And then also the color grade, of course, in combination with S-Log3. But the most important thing probably is that I used the gimbal to shoot that short film. And that gives you, a gimbal gives you that 
very specific, super steady look that I really like. Because, you know, here on YouTube, we're all used to shooting handheld. I kind of like a gimbal for some, some videos, especially here. So, in this case, it wasn't just the settings that made the video look what it looks like. It was also the time of the day, the gimbal, and the color grade. The settings are, are just a small part of, of that whole mix, you know? Okay. <sighs> and then finally, I want to show you another way to make your footage look different, and that's by using an anamorphic lens. This was all shot using the same old settings, 4K, S-Log3, 24fps, shutter 1 50th, manual focus, because it was a manual focus lens. This was shot with the Greatjoy 50mm T2.9, and image stabilization turned off because image stabilization does not work well with an anamorphic lens. Your viewers will get seasick if you leave stabilization turned on, because the corners will wobble like you've never seen before. But I just want to show you this because, you know, if you use the same settings but a different lens, you can also get a completely different look. Always remember that. And it doesn't have to be an anamorphic lens. Even switching from a 24 or a 35 millimeter to an 85 millimeter, for example, will completely change the look of your videos. But anamorphic, it has that little extra, you know? This is what the footage looks like when you drop it on your timeline. It's squeezed and then you have to de-squeeze it. And it's not just that aspect ratio that makes it look cinematic and different. It's also the wide angle of view, the specific look of the out of focus background, and how it renders the image. So anamorphic looks really cool, in my opinion. But an anamorphic lens, they're getting cheaper, but I'm not gonna say that they're cheap. Just a little bit less expensive than a couple of years ago. Okay, there you go. I really have to stop here because like, This is what my heart rate normally is when I go running or something. Jesus, what's going on? I don't know. But okay, all I wanted to show is that, yes, camera settings are important. Camera settings are the foundation. You have to know how the basics work and then you can build on that foundation. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's just end it here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope it helps and hopefully see you in the next one. Camina, camina, camina.